On the air. Yes, thank you. I, I've been listening to the discussion, and, and I'm a military wife. My husband's on his third tour to Iraq. And I just want to, if I could look Mr. Crystal and people like him from the American Enterprise Institute, these people that are still pushing the war, I sleep two hours a night. I, I'm sure when your head hits your pillow, you know, you have the luxury of dreaming about, you know, anything that that your mom will allow you to dream about. I'm waiting. I sleep with a phone under my pillow. My kids, if someone rings the doorbell, instead of doing what normal kids do, they freeze. And they're in elementary school. You all don't understand. We're military people, but we're people, too. And the stress that we are under is tremendous. So I'll make a proposal before I, before I have to leave the air. If this war is as important as, as you on the right and the, the hawks say it is, and if it is truly essential to our vital interest to do this, then institute the draft so we can have a break. We are at the breaking point. I just had to counsel a friend last night who has had a solid marriage for 14 years because their marriage has fallen apart, because they're dual military and they haven't lived under the same roof together in five years. We're people. We can't keep up this stress level. Our children can't keep up this stress level. The spouses left behind can't keep up this stress level. And all you all keep saying, you just called my husband and all his troops a liar when you said it's mostly the insurgents attacking us. Because when I do get the luxury of speaking to my husband, what I'm hearing is the Iraqis let us through the gate, the security forces will let us through the gate, and 30 minutes after we pass through, they're, they're laying down IEDs to blow us up when we come back through. They don't want us there. I understand you truly believe what you're saying, but it's not working. We can't want it for them more than they want it for themselves. Please bring my husband home. Please bring our brave troops home. We're tired. We're really tired. Thank and you. I'm not Thank you, Carla. We understand. Well, look, the Army, some of us have been arguing. Well, first of all, I really respect, obviously, the service of those who have been over there. We had dinner last night with close friends whose son just got back from Iraq, and it is tough duty, obviously, and now we're on second and third tours. Some of us argued for a long time before 9-11 and very vehemently after 9-11 that the Army and Marines were too small for the world we are living in, for the foreign policy obligations we are likely to have to impose on our military, for the war fighting obligations we're going to have to impose on the all-volunteer military. And finally, we're increasing the size of the Army and the Marines, but we're paying a price for that in terms of longer tours and people going back a second and third times and the strains on family life are obviously very real and the, obviously it's, it's, a tough, it's, it's, it's a tough job over there. Um, so I, I hope we do more to, to deal with that. Um, you go so far as to her thought on the draft? Well, I, 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 I,